Hello church, Pastor Scott Brown here at Faith Methodist Church. We're so glad to have all of you joining us online. Uh, we realize some of you may be traveling, some of you may not be able to get out and even see the sermon any other way than do it online. Uh, and we're honored to be here for all of you. Um, it's an exciting time of the year. We are moving into the last part of the year. That means a couple of things for us here at Faith Methodist Church. As we're just a couple of weeks out from Advent, uh, one of the things it means is this Sunday we will put out our uh, giving tree. Uh, and that means that there will be uh, tags for you and us to help some families who might not have Christmas otherwise. We'll have 24 families and kids that we sponsor. And uh, if you'd like to be part of that, uh, call me, email me, let us know you want to do that. And we will, we will hook you up with all the things you need to make that happen. Second thing that happens this time of year is we have our pledge cards uh, going out. You should receive those in the mail. If you don't, you're more than welcome to call us and ask for that. That would be awesome to have someone call and say, hey, I didn't get a pledge card. Um, we appreciate so much the generosity of, of our faithful followers and believers in here at Faith Methodist Church. And uh, our pledge cards go out to help us kind of have an idea how to set a budget for next year. We're growing here. Uh, as of this Sunday, uh, in our live service, we'll have several people joining the church today. We'll have uh, several baptisms today. Uh, so we're seeing life in this church. We're seeing growth in our church. And we want to see that continue. And obviously, there's practical things that make that happen. And giving helps with those practical things. So thank you in advance for your generosity and for your, your care. And, uh, and toward the end of the year, for any special gifts you want to give to help us do that. We've had a lot of new things and today uh, we're gonna be celebrating some of those new things uh, in our live service. We've, we've got new members, we've got a new denomination, a new pastor, we've got a new paint, new carpet, new, just a new vision. And we're excited about what God's doing. So if you wanna be a part of what God's doing here and you can do that through a financial donation, we would really appreciate that as well. But most of all, we covet your prayers Nothing great and nothing god size happens without prayer. So uh, pray for us. Keep us in your prayers. Keep me in your prayers as I try to lead us. And uh, let's see where God takes this thing. Well, it's also Veterans Day this week. Um, a couple of days ago, but we celebrated on this weekend. So we say thank you to all of our veterans, all of you who served and, and put your life on the line and given your service so that we can celebrate the freedom that we have here in this place today. So thank you, and please feel our appreciation and be honored uh, in this place today. And on that note, I'm going to uh, share a sermon that's gonna actually hopefully be meaningful to some of our veterans today, as it will to all of us. Uh, not necessarily intended for Veterans Day, but it's got a lot of good stuff in it. And so I wanna read a scripture to you as we begin today. And that scripture you're gonna know very, very well. It's John 3, 16 and verse 17. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. What an amazing passage, one that's known worldwide even by non-Christians. Uh, but we know it and we take it to heart. So I want to tell you a story today. It's a story of a man, it starts with a man named Warner. He was an attorney, an uh, investor, and he lived in New York back in the early 1800s. And uh, in 1837, uh, if you remember your history, there was a, a financial panic that went through the country, run on the banks, all these kind of things. And this man lost everything. He lost most of his fortune, most of his wealth. And along the way, uh, because uh, he was wealthy at one time, he had bought a summer house in another part of New York. Well, when he lost everything, the summer house had become basically a rundown cottage, and, uh, but they were forced, he and his two daughters, he had lost his wife, and they were forced to move out from Long Island, New York, to a place called West Point, New York, right across the river from the West Point Academy, the uh, military academy. And because financial times were difficult and, and he was having trouble getting back on his feet, the daughters, young girls, two daughters, Sarah and Anna, 
um, had decided to uh, start doing something to help with that. I said Sarah, I'm sorry, it was Susan and Anna. Uh, Susan and Anna Warner had decided they would start writing, and they started writing short stories and poems, and they would sell them. And along the line, they began to write other things and write uh, novels and all these kind of things, and they became quite good at that, and they became quite successful at that. Well, in her first novel, uh, Susan is writing a story about um, a young boy who's dying, and she asked her sister Anna to write a poem that would go along with that part of the novel. And Anna obliged her and wrote a poem. And uh, that poem was very good, and she published it, and it went out in the book around 1860 when it was published. Now, what else was happening around 1860? The Civil War was beginning here in America. And so, uh, as happened, because these two girls lived where they did, and because they were absolutely fully committed to Jesus Christ, they traced their lineage all the way back to the early Puritans, and they, they never married these two sisters. They just wrote and, and, and provided for their family and for their father. And they began to hold Sunday school classes for the cadets at West Point. And so every Sunday, these cadets would come over and have Sunday school. And these two uh, young girls would teach these cadets uh, the scriptures and the gospel. And about once a month, Anna would write a new song, a new hymn for them to sing. Well, this poem that she wrote for this particular novel became uh, quite interesting. And a, a hymn writer named Bartlett took this poem and put it to music. And the cadets began to learn this song. The song that she wrote, this poem that she wrote that became a hymn, uh, became the most, at the time, and I think maybe still today, the most widely translated uh, spiritual song in, in multiple languages. It became the first song missionaries taught when they went on the mission field to other cultures. And it simply said, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. We know that song, don't we? And this is the story of how it was written. And, the, and these girls continued to teach these cadets. And that song became so impressed upon them because they were going through tragic times. You can remember during the Civil War, all that these men had to go through in battle and the horrible conditions they had to stay in and the horrible conditions that they, that they had to endure. Uh, they didn't have the modern facilities and the modern army and the mobile uh, tents and things that we have today. They, they had to live in the elements. They had to fight these battles out in the middle of nowhere in the fields. And both sides would re be recorded in history saying that this song, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, For the Bible Tells Me So, became an incredible encouragement to them during these battles. And such an amazing impact that this little song had on these cadets and on them as they went out into the, the battlefields and both sides would say what an amazing uh, influence it had and it continued to have for years to come. Well, these sisters continued to teach at West Point through the years all the way up to their death in 1915 for Anna. Matter of fact, one of her last Sunday school students that came through her class was a guy by the name of Dwight D. Eisenhower. Um, this was so, uh, they had such an impact on these students and on these soldiers that they became, at the time, and I think it's still true today, that the only two civilians buried at the West Point Cemetery with honors um, because of their impact on the military academy and on the military as it went forward. All because of this little song, Jesus Loves Me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. So as we read, hear that, and then read John 3, 16 this morning, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, we ask the question, can it really be that simple? Can it really be that simple? And what's, what is it in the simplicity of this that works? And how can we take that and make that something that, that works for us today? Someone asked me the question this week, how are we going to reach the young people? We've got to come up with new ways and creative ways and speak their language and do all this stuff. And we're, we're knocking ourselves out, bending and twisting, trying everything we can to reach people and young people. And we're, church across the board is not finding a lot of success in that. So what do we do? And, and, I, and I said to this person what I absolutely believe. 
I said, I don't think it's that hard. I think we're making it harder than it is. And we're trying to culturally relate to them when what they're looking for is the same thing everyone's looking for. They're looking for a foundation. They're looking for something they can trust. They're looking for something that they can build on. It may take them some time to find it, but the reality is the only thing that they have to build on that will ever last is the relationship with Jesus Christ and the love of Jesus Christ. And finding that in the authority and in the solid foundation of the Bible. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Simple words, but profound nonetheless, because they call us to a foundation that we can know. This world today is no different than the world any other time. People are looking for something that they can know, that they can count on, that can be theirs, that they can put everything else on and know that if there's one thing that doesn't get shaken, it's that. Hebrews tells us that one day everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And the only thing that will remain is the word and the truth of God. And we know that as Christians. We know that in the church. But we've got to find a way to say that to them. We've got to find a way to continue to say that through our witness and our testimonies and our lives. So that when they come to a place in life where everything is shaken, where nothing is working, when everything else is moving around them is not secure, when they're in the midst of the battle, whether it's the civil war and literal battles or the battles of just doing life every day, there's something that says I can come back and know that Jesus loves me. Because the Bible says it. It tells me so. Powerful, simple, amazing words. I was leading a camp in North Carolina one summer while I was in seminary. And every night of the camp, we'd have different groups from, well, every week we'd have different groups from different parts of the country come in. And they would bring youth groups to come to this camp in North Carolina. And they would work during the day, kind of a mission camp. And at night we would have services. And this one particular camp came in, the first, one of the first ones. Um, and, and their leader was a strong leader. It was one of the best groups we were gonna have in all year. They were solid in so many things. And I wanted to be, uh, a, I, actually, I wanted to impress them, right? I wanted to give them my very best. And so I sat there that day while they were out of camp and out at working, and I would write sermons. And I wanted something that would just be powerful and wow them and blow them away and let them have a sense of God that they'd not seen anywhere else and, and take advantage of the majestic mountains around us and the, and the beauty around us and really make this a God moment for them. And I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I kept scrapping what I wrote. And finally, I prayed about it. I said, God, what do you want me to say to these kids? He said, God, keep it simple. Just tell them I love them. And I'll be honest with you. I went and taught the most simple, basic Bible. Jesus loves you. You can be saved message that I could possibly have come up with. I could not have made it any simpler. I didn't put any illustrations. I didn't do anything else. I simply said, God loves you. And he wants you to have a relationship with you. And do you know that night we had, we had more kids get saved probably than any other week we had that, that year. Uh, more kids came and gave their life to Christ and, and had, a, had a moment with God. And because I got out of the way and let the simplicity of the gospel and the thing that we know is true be there. And it works. And brother and sisters, let me tell you something, it works everywhere we go. You don't have to be a biblical scholar. You don't have to be a, a, a student of, of, of theology. You don't have to do any special thing to tell people that Jesus loves them. You know it because the Bible tells you so. It's encouragement. It's truth. It's, it's powerful. And if we will go out and just live our lives and go out and be the witnesses we're called to be in every situation and simply count on that love that Jesus gives us, I think we're going to see more baptisms in our churches. And I think we're going to see more people coming and claiming and proclaiming and shouting that they know Jesus and knowing that they found a foundation. And I think we'll find Christians who have not understood the foundation that they own and that they have. Finding that security in the person and in the presence of Jesus Christ through his word. 
The story of Anna Bartlett and, and, and her sister is, is an amazing story. But it's simply the story of what God did through two young girls who were trying to just put food on their table. And they were faithful to God and they knew God and they loved God. And they did the, what they just knew to do. They wrote stories and poems and books. Well, we get to do what we know to do. Our everyday life, just go do it. But remember that our message is always the same. Jesus loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever would believe in him would never perish, but have eternal life. The simplicity of the gospel in one verse. The simplicity of the gospel. And Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I hope that you go away encouraged by this. I hope that you are encouraged to share this good news with somebody today or this week when you get the opportunity. And if you can't, get out and share it, pray it into somebody. Get on the phone and call them and tell them about it. It's not hard. Our young people are not lost. They just don't know this news yet, that there's something they actually can build a foundation on. So God bless you on this Veterans Day weekend and on this wonderful Sunday in the life of Faith Church and wherever you are. May God, in the simplicity and the beauty of his love, find you and hold you and let you know that Jesus loves you. And we know this because the Bible tells us so. God bless you. We'll see you next time.